What's up guys, my name is Jose Shorty Torres and you're watching another episode of Inside Team Shorty where I give the reality, the truth, and everything behind the scenes of the sport of MMA. Last time I talked about the pride and ego in a fight. It's awesome. And we sometimes need to swallow our pride. No one wants to be an Apollo Creed. I love the guy to death, but death is what he got. And that's not what I want. I want to see Apollo Creed fight again, and I'm sad they cut him off in the series of Rocky Four. But today we're talking about pride and ego in practice. And I think it's a bigger topic to talk about because it's leading up to the fight, whether it's a one week notice, four week notice, a month, eight weeks, a two month notice, or even longer, some of these high level championship fights. For me, I have, and I've had before, two to three months in a camp, and I've had the other one where it's one to two weeks. Again, but I'm taking damage in both. It can be internal physical damage when it comes to weight cuts, nine days, 26 pounds, which that really sucked. And then immediately after, another 28 pounds for 20 days, I lost 54 pounds in 45 days on the whole another story. Or you're taking the beating, well, I didn't just lose 28 pounds in 20 days to that next fight in the 54 uh, 54 pounds in 45 day span, but I took 107 shots to the head in that fight. Now, given I only had 20 days to prepare for that event, but I wasn't ready. And what I mean by that was my body wasn't physically prepared. It was more internally damaged and definitely mentally damaging because I was just cutting weight, cutting weight, cutting weight, sauna, 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 overheating, 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 not eating well or not eating fully, should I say, like I usually do with my chubby cheeks. And I was always on a very, very low carb diet, but I still had to do extreme workouts to cut, again, 20 pounds in 20 days. I'm a flyweight, 125. That's not a good thing, given I shouldn't be that fat. But still, anywho, for these people who have two to three month camps, which again, I've had, it damaging because like for example you look at my hand now this finger won't go all the way up but this one no problem why because you take damage in practice I definitely do mainly on my fighting style I have a nice little shiner both my eyes are a little swollen and today was just jujitsu this is just accidental forms to the face yeah these might be little things I'm still walking I'm still training I'm still doing all these things but I spar three times a week sometimes I might be taking too many shots to the head sometimes I'm going Okay, that was, a, that was a good one. Heck, I think last week or two weeks ago, I posted about Eric Shelton cracking me really hard. And uh, I was like, I'm feeling woozy. Like, that stuff happened. And I might have had a, a minor concussion or just a small headache or even a big severe concussion. Luckily, I took two weeks off anyways just to be safe. But a lot of people like myself, mainly the beginning of my career, I didn't do that. I was very prideful. I, if I could spar, even still now, I kind of think about it. If I could spar every single day, I would because I love this sport. I love the challenge and I love everything that comes with it. You know, sparring with different people, different styles, different techniques, you know, speed, power, whatever the case may be. It's awesome. And I always have to adapt and catch up. And I think that is really, really cool. The only problem is now I'm putting myself in a lot of physical and sometimes internal damage. You heard about those two boxers that died in the same week in their fight, but what could have caused that leading up in the training camp where they're already concussed? Yeah, I've heard of boxers and fighters lying in those medical tests saying, hey, have you been concussed in the last six months? I have, but no, because they want to fight. It's a payday. I get it. I probably have done it before. I believe the fifth, but it's the fact of fighters do that. And that's fight day and that might have happened to them. They might have been concussed going in there and taking too much damage, a lot of physical damage because again, those gloves are a lot smaller. That's primarily all they're going for, especially in boxing. And they were just getting outboxed and outworked and they got beat up. And sadly that night they, you know, went to the other side. And it, it's, it's painful to hear and even say and think about because that might happen to me. But the crazy thing is sometimes that happens in practice. I know there's MMA gyms that I've even been to that spar 100%. Heck, I used to spar with TJ and him and I used to crack each other, which is awesome. I love that type of sparring because it is 100% real. But you shouldn't do that every single sparring session. Mainly if you're sparring two to three times a week, you can do that once every three weeks, once a month to get a real life feel. But hey, if you already take, you took too much damage in the first round, okay, we're, we're done. You can break it down because it's not an actual fight. You don't need to go three five minute rounds, uh, five five minute rounds or 12, you know, three minute rounds. You don't need to be doing that. It's the fact of, yeah, you might want to get a real life experience, 
But if you don't have to, mainly take all that damage, then you shouldn't. Because you're going to probably take a lot of damage, especially if the guy's better than you in a fight. You never know what could happen. You could be the better opponent. But you take one good shot out of nowhere, you're just... This is not functioning the best. And I don't know where you're getting beat up for three more rounds, five rounds, or whatever the case may be, however uh, many more minutes. Again, we take a lot of damage. I think Donald Cerrone stated in, in one of the interviews years ago when I was back at Jackson Wink where he's saying, I don't spar anymore. Why? Because I take a lot of damage. These guys get very egotistical where we're going live. It's like, oh, cool. And I crack him because he ran into it. His fault. I did nothing wrong. He just made the punch a lot more strong. Uh, stronger in impact because he ran into it and I don't know he's like oh you want to hit me hard all right let's go homie or they just are pride one ego and like oh man you hit me with a good shot then let's go that's dumb I get it I still kind of do it today <laughs> I'm dumb though but those practices happen and sometimes we're very prideful and egotistical we're like okay cool let's go I can go toe to toe with you and I have no problem with it whether I'm better whether I'm worse even if I'm better one shot can give me a concussion and it doesn't even have to be that hard. It can just bite, be in the right place. And mainly if you're sparring Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and you're not taking care of your body, you're not taking care of your brain, giving yourself the right amount of supplements, the right amount of sleep, which is the most important, or just relaxing your mind, staying off your phone, not like what I'm doing now, or just whatever the case may be, to give your body overall rest, doing a float tank, crowd therapy, whatever the case may be, to make your brain and body that much healthier, take it. Because if you're not doing that, it's, it's going to hinder your performance in many, many ways. I know after the Alex Perez fight, I took multiple months, not just to help my brain relax. It was a three month suspension, so I had no choice, but I worked on a lot of physical technique and a lot of mental training to, to prepare myself. Cause again, that fight week and the whole training camp, obviously I, there was none. It was just weight cut. And I was mentally broken in many ways, not just because of that fight, but way things before that, that led up to that moment. And it was just a big demise. For me, I had to work on it. And I took care of myself mentally and I took care of myself, especially physically relaxing until I finally got back in there. And by the time I got back in there, I was 100%. I didn't, I didn't feel like I took any damage from my last fight because I took so much time off. Definitely I was fat. I was definitely a butterball, kind of like what I am now. But it's the fact of I performed that much better. And then leading up to my next fight, my first fight in Brave, I performed that much better by dropping a guy three times in the first round. I've never done that. Uh, let me rephrase that. I've done that once before. But still, like... That's rare to do. I had 10 fights as a professional, 26 as an amateur, and many more in kickboxing and boxing and all that stuff. But ego and pride, man, can hurt you, especially in practice. You're supposed to drill. You're supposed to improve your skills and help your teammate, on the other hand. But if you're always beating up your teammate because you're that much better or trying to beat up your teammate because he's that much better than you and now you guys hurt each other, there's a problem. There has to be a happy medium where you're both still helping each other, improving each other's game but not killing each other. I mean, I spar with people here where sometimes I'm better than them and sometimes they're better than me and I know their days. I know they're hurt. But I don't have to drop someone in practice. I don't want somebody to drop me in practice. Hey, if you, you got a good body shot and I literally physically can't move, then okay, cool, let me take a break instead of being like this in the ropes or the fence and now I'm just taking the beating. I don't need, definitely don't deserve, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not a jerk. And talking about that, I'll tell you. Anyways, um, and hopefully I'm doing the right thing to take care of myself. Hey, you landed a good headshot. <sighs> Let me shake it off. If it's that bad, okay, I'm done for the day. I told somebody today he sprang, he dislocated his thumb the day before practice, in practice, then came for the next one. We're rolling, and he tried to plant on the floor, and he's like, oh, my thumb, it popped out again. Pops it back, and he's like, all right, let's go. I'm like, dude, what for? You fight in about five weeks. Relax. Swallow your pride. Let this heal for a couple days, let this heal for a week, whatever the case may be. It's not going to be 100% in a week, but it's going to feel a lot much better then than it is now. And if you can't do it now, it's going to keep on re-popping back out. It might get worse. Now you're tearing ligaments and now it's completely out of whack and you might need surgery. Or instead, you might have to back out of the fight and wait months to fight again. Wait a week, then fight in a month. Wait however many days, then fight in a couple weeks, whatever the case may be, but give yourself time to relax and recover. I train through injuries all the time. This is no problem. I can still grip, I can do everything, but if my finger's like this, all the way wrapped around, mm, maybe I should take the day off. Maybe I should get that checked out. If I wake up with an extreme headache because of sparring the next day, let me go back to bed. Let me take whatever supplements I need, whether it's my, my Neuroptimax or whatever the case, shout out to you guys, but all the things of just whatever to make my brain better, do that and then go back to rest, go back to sleep. 
get the 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 rest your body needs and deserves because you work hard you put your life on the line every single day the only problem is you don't know that it's not just in fights but it's also in practice they can take one shot again even in practice where you guys are too too prideful and it ends it all or accidental hits to the back of the head or whatever the case may be which i've had those before too but guys pride and ego in practice is i think a, a bigger thing a huge thing compared to fighting because we have a day five days ten days two months three months or even longer to prepare take all that beating to that one moment that might last 30 40 an hour you know so swallow your pride in practice i'm like tense about this because it, it's a huge thing that i'm still trying to learn today if i don't feel well i have all my recovery things but some people obviously can't afford that or don't have that so rest do things at home that you need to relax and rest i use my recovery products because i'm that paranoid now i'm a hypochondriac in my body thinking like oh my god my wrist is broken this is here this is there whatever the case may be i might not be feeling well so let me just relax that last fight that I lost, it definitely impacted me, but I believe in a positive way that I needed to better protect myself. Again, I want to have a long, beautiful career where, yeah, I take my bumps and bruises, but I can have it as long as I want. Then eventually my body tells me I can't, and hey, man, I can't. But I don't want to have, I'm 27, man. I don't want to have one fight, and now I can't fight at 28, 29, or 30 because I'm dead, you know, or brain dead or paralyzed. And you see those stories online where people can't even talk anymore. They're just a blank face. So guys, it's, it's a huge thing. It's unfortunate for those people who are brain dead, special now, um, need help, need assistance, they can't walk, their backs, or whatever the case may be, or those people who are now deceased. It's, it's a crazy thing. And for you coaches out there that are coaching fighters that are extremely prideful, please watch over them. Because um, I have my own set of guys that I watch over as well and I want and care for their safety as much as I care for mine. And that's how a coach should be. Um, some people I don't like as much, but hey, if I can help you, I can still help you. But you know what I'm trying to say? It's, um, it's huge. And for you fighters, you need to respect your body. You need to understand yourself and go, today's just not my day. Let, let, me, let me relax, okay? If you're better than me today. Hey, I don't need to go harder just to get beat up more. Um, or I got this injury. Let me relax. Come back tomorrow. Let me ice it. Let me take care of myself. Let me do what I need to do so my body can recover to its fullest, so I can perform my best at 80, 70, 60% or even lower and get demolished and even more hurt with that. So guys, with that being said, protect yourself in practice because you'll definitely perform that much better in your match. But if you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below. Let me know what you think. If there's any more in practice that I missed, let me know. But this is my topic on Pride and Ego, guys. Sometimes you need to swallow it because you can doesn't mean you should and just, Good luck out there, guys. Be safe. Be healthy to fight another day. You might lose one day, but that doesn't mean you can't win again or beat them in the future. So this was another episode of Inside Team Shorty. We can, we will. Together we are Team Shorty, and I appreciate your love and support. And guys, remember, if you want to support the foundation, teamshorty.com. Everything goes to my foundation to help keep kids, teens, and young adults inside the gym and off the streets. I appreciate the love and support, and this was another episode. Thank you. So, 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 so.